Do you have these pesky rough spots on your skin? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about what they are and how we can treat them without causing further inflammation, irritation, or scarring. So these spots are called seborrheic keratoses, and often people refer to them as barnacles or age spots. I like to call them wisdom spots. I think it sounds a lot nicer than calling something age spots. But I treat seborrheic keratoses all the time in my cosmetic practice, and I thought we could discuss it in this video today. So my name is Dr. Swati Cannon, and and I am a cosmetic dermatologist as well as a skin cancer surgeon out here in California. Stay tuned till the end of this video because I will definitely share some great befores and afters of patients who have had their seborrheic keratoses treated. Because seborrheic keratosis is such a long term, we're just gonna call them SKs. So if I say SK, it means seborrheic keratoses. When patients get SKs, they often get really worried because these growths look quite dangerous and they even meet the criteria of what we call ABCDE criteria of melanoma. So the ABCDE criteria is basically when you're looking at your moles, if they look asymmetric, if the borders look fuzzy, if the color varies within that mole, if the diameter is greater than six millimeter, which is the size of a pencil eraser, or if it's evolving, meaning changing, then these are the criteria that often suggest that, hey, you should get your mole evaluated by a dermatologist to rule out a melanoma. So often SKs do meet the ABCDE criteria, but SKs are not dangerous. They are not cancerous. They are benign growths that can often appear as rough or smooth patches. And sometimes they're even mistaken for warts. They are, come in different colors. So they can be skin colored, pink, tan, brown, black. And often on your own body, you can have different colored SKs that appear. With that being said though, Skin cancers such as melanoma, squamous cells, or basal cell carcinomas, they can sometimes look like seborrheic keratoses. So it's really important to get these spots evaluated by dermatologists. You know, we not only have our knowledge and expertise, but we also have a special tool called a dermatoscope. And we're able to closely look at these keratoses and make sure that they in fact are benign. Patients who have darker skin can get skin cancers that are pigmented that can often look like seborrheic keratosis. So again, a really good reason to get these evaluated by your dermatologist before you attempt any removal. So why do SKs form? Well, the cause isn't exactly understood, but we all get them and we all start getting them kind of in our 30s, but we commonly see them after we turn 50. All ethnicities get them, men and women get them, and there is a perception that these happen because you're not washing your skin enough, that it's overgrowth of skin or dead skin cells, and that's simply not true. SKs have nothing to do with hygiene. Genetics do play a big role as SKs do run in family. So if you see your you know, mom or dad or grandparents with a lot of SKs, chances are you might get a lot as well as you get older. And there is no determined link to sun exposure because we see SKs even on concealed areas like the trunk, the back, and the upper legs. So there's no relationship to sun exposure that we have linked it to. However, in some of my patients, I have seen more SKs in sun exposed areas. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful so far, please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to share with your friends and family who may find this helpful as well. Of note, there is a variation of SKs called DPNs that stands for Dermatosis Papulosa Nigra, which are these tiny, tiny little SKs that darker skinned individuals can get on their face. And these might be linked to sun exposure, by the way. These are very common and we remove it very similarly to how we remove SKs and I will talk about treatment so so stay tuned. A common question I get is, can a cream remove SKs? And the answer is no. So even though these growths look pigmented, they in fact don't contain that much pigment. They're, if you look underneath the microscope, you'll see that the top part of the skin has just overgrown. And so you'll see this kind of wavy undulation of what we call the epidermis. And that's kind of what's contributing to that warty or rough look for a seborrheic keratosis. And so it's not a sunspot or a disc colored spot technically that's going to, going to respond to a cream. In fact, there was a company that tried to make a cream that was a prescription cream called Escada. And this was a cream that was supposed to remove SKs, but it did not work that well at all. And so after two years, it was taken off the market. Some of you might be tempted to burn them off at home or take a rough towel or a pumice stone to scrub them off. I definitely do not recommend that because not only are you going to get irritation or inflammation, 
it's not really going to work. Sure, the top part might slough off, but the SK is going to come back because you haven't treated the base. So it's best to leave the treatment to professionals like myself. Now for treatment of SKs, we have different options. And all of these options basically include kind of destroying the SK in some way, shape or form. So the first way to destroy it is by using something called cryotherapy or liquid nitrogen. So liquid nitrogen comes in this spray. And if you've ever seen a dermatologist, you know that we carry this spray around with us in all our rooms. It basically liquid nitrogen is compressed in, in a bottle and we can spray an SK. It takes more than one treatment, but the SK will freeze and then fall off. So for large ones on the back or the trunk, especially in my lighter skin patients, I usually will treat these with cryotherapy because it's so much faster. And there is a risk of discoloration when we treat SKs with cryotherapy because the liquid nitrogen does get some of the surrounding tissue, freezes that off as well, which can then cause hypopigmentation or a lighter discoloration. In some patients, it can cause hyperpigmentation, and in others, it can just leave a red spot. The redness eventually goes away with time. Another option to treat SK is something called electrodesiccation and curettage, or EDNC for short. I prefer this option for cosmetically sensitive areas like the face, the neck, the chest. So usually we will numb the area first, either with a lidocaine in injection, or if patients have a lot of SKs in the area, I will also use topical numbing prior, like an hour prior to the treatment. We then take cautery, which is a, a, a tool that uses heat to just gently burn the area, and then we'll curette or scrape the area with an instrument called a curette. So in this video, you can kind of see that happening. So this will get rid of the SK right away. It is much less likely to leave discoloration, but it just takes a long time, especially if you have a lot, since we have to burn and scrape each one individually. Now, even though the SKs go away after the treatment, you can definitely get new ones. And right now we don't have any way of preventing new ones. I also use EDNC to remove DPNs. And that is because DPNs tend to occur in darker skin patients. So we don't want to freeze it, which would definitely leave hypopigmentation. So I will use EDNC to remove DPNs and it's just very gentle burning and scraping. And most of the patients heal up within about two weeks and have much clearer skin afterwards. Lasers can definitely be used as well. There's mainly two types of lasers that we use to treat SKs. If your SK is flat and it almost looks like a sunspot, then I will use a laser called Q-switched or Pico, which delivers high amounts of energy in a short amount of time. So it will kind of destroy that spot. Within a week, that spot will flake off. If the SK is a little bit thicker, we will use a laser called an ablative laser, which when we zap it, it kind of just ablates the top portion off. The spot gets crusty and it heals within one to two weeks. But lasers are the more expensive option. So for most of my patients, I usually prefer to use EDNC because it's more cost effective. Now, are any of these treatments covered by insurance? So not really. If you have one or two spots that look irritated, then liquid nitrogen or the cryotherapy is covered for these spots. But if you have a lot of keratoses and we're removing it for cosmetic reasons, then your insurance will not cover it and it is an out-of-pocket cost. The out-of-pocket cost varies depending on the number of SKs we're treating and which location you are in the country. So now to the fun part, let's look at some befores and afters. This man, he is a super nice gentleman. He came in and he had over a hundred SKs just on his face. If a patient comes in and they have a lot of SKs, I will usually treat the area in parts. If I treated all the entire face, he's going to have a lot of spots to take care of, which just increases the risk of infection. So we first treated his forehead with EDNC. And after one treatment, you can see a really noticeable improvement in his forehead. We're going to continue treating the face. And on one of my social media platforms, I will definitely share that full face before and after. Here's another patient who had a lot of DPNs as well as a few larger SKs on her face. She also has underlying sun damage that we eventually treated with the chemical peel. But I used very gentle EDNC to treat her SKs and you can notice an improvement after two treatments. So we did one half of the face on one treatment, a second half of the face, a second treatment, and you can notice that within three weeks after the treatment, she looks much better and she was very happy. For those of you who have SKs, you probably also have sunspots and fleshy bumps called skin tags. My next video is on skin tags, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned. And if you do have sunspots and underlying sun damage, the treatment is different than how we treat SKs. So make sure you watch this video next where I go over the treatment for sunspots. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.